Views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the program host and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions held by TCN TV Network Incorporated. Due to the social nature of this broadcasting channel, videos may contain content copyrighted by another entity or person. The TCN TV Network claims no rights to the said content. TCN TV Network cannot be held accountable for the copyrighted content. TCN TV Network is a messenger and sharer of information and strives to verify but cannot warrant the accuracy of copyrights or completeness of the information on this program. We discuss all the issues, municipal, provincial, federal, and any issue of national importance. We will talk about an on point. Good evening and welcome to On Point, your number one political and current affairs talk show program. Once again, we're coming to you live from the beautiful city of Brampton over here in Ontario, where it's a bit cold on the outside, but it's always a good day in the city of Brampton. On the show this evening, we are taking a look at how your taxpayers' dollars are being spent here at the Brampton City Council. There have been a lot of conversation and some heated debates about how that money is being spent but this evening you can always depend on your on point team to get you the details to get you the facts so joining me this evening is as usual um brampton businessman our community advocate and our community uh leader um uh uh you're making me blush <laughs> you're making me blush muriel russo here to, Mario uh, russo. <laughs> to, to, to be uh, a voice for the uh, people of brampton <laughs> And with us, we have uh, Mr. Len Carby, the RBC Retirement and Investment Planner and a strong community leader here in the city of Brampton. Len? Always good to be here, Jeremy. Good Always to have here. you. So before we get into the meat of the matter, we have some other headlines. We want to touch on them very quickly. Um, you know, Len, we kick off with you. If there is a way to so much we see the turnaround of a premier, we saw Premier Doug Ford, uh, you know, hosting his other premiers in uh, in Ontario, in Mississauga, earlier on this week, you know, and he seems to be coming out as the person, you know, who Justin Trudeau was hitting at him in the last election. He seems to be the premier now coming out and say, hey, listen, Canada needs to be united. We need to work together. What do you take about the premier's meeting, your impression of how that went uh, over the last two days? Very interesting <laughs> to start with me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, leadership requires, uh, you know, the maturity to be able mm -hmm. to grow. And, and, and if uh, Mr. Ford has, out of the last election, seen the benefits in working closely with other premiers and, and taking a leadership role nationally, of course, um, mm -hmm. you give him the devil is due. Uh, and so... <laughs> Choice <laughs> uh, of words. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I, I think that's something that to be commended, actually, mm -hmm. um, for, for him stepping up in, in that way and, and demonstrating that he has the capacity um, to, to learn from the experience of the past election and recognize that, you know, Ontarians were, for the most part, um, not very thrilled. Um, mm -hmm. And here's an opportunity to turn that around. He has another uh, good what, two years, year mm -hmm. or so plus um, to, to make some significant, um, you know, strides um, in, the city, in, in Ontario. And, and hopefully this is a move in the right direction that will carry forward. Yeah. And I think uh, Ontario's voice should be heard. Uh, Ontario uh if, if i'm not mistaken is is representative of the largest population the uh, yeah. across the country yeah, so uh, our premier uh essentially is has been given the mandate to be mm -hmm. the voice for uh the majority yeah, uh, yeah. and and mm -hmm. and the the vastness of ontario uh is is uh something that is not easy mm -hmm. because there's uh, obviously with the urbanization and so forth of the 905 mm -hmm. and 416 but we have northern ontario we have we have mineral issues. We have so many issues that mm -hmm. um, other places in, in Canada does um, basically assimilate with as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have the, uh, the anomaly mm -hmm. or the, uh, you know, the luxury of, of, of having the, the, the numbers as well. 
some, some other headline issues. We'll jump right on a few headlines. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the teachers might be on strike tomorrow. Uh, you know, the, the they minister... They will be on strike. They, unless well, it's solved. <laughs> unless there is a, a, a meeting or a, a, a deal between the teachers' union and the government uh, by midnight tonight. Um, Len, your take on the situation down there. We, we, we swing, well, let's swing to Mario first since we got you the first one the last mm -hmm. time. You know, your take on what is going on there with the unions and the government and keeping the kids in the classroom. Well, I mean, uh, as a parent, uh, I can only say, obviously, we want our kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. The collective bargaining process is a difficult, uh, but I hope, and this is we've said this a few times, is mm -hmm. that as long as both sides are coming with the an open mind and, and truly wanting to negotiate, mm -hmm. um, one thing that you know so why i say uh there will be is that mm -hmm. um it was already decided that in the event, unless they have reached a settlement mm -hmm. they're going to have this one day strike mm -hmm. uh from what i understand correct yeah, one day and strike. and and then uh we'll come back to work and then continue i know when i drop my daughter off at school in the morning uh mm -hmm. you do have the uh the teachers out there for the uh work to rule process mm -hmm. It's something that, um, again, I know the government side fo um, focuses on the fact that this is something that's not, um, not just. We're not mm -hmm. seeing it just in this cycle of governance. Mm -hmm. We've seen it with all different govern uh, yeah. governments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we just, you know, really, this is a business negotiation essentially. Mm -hmm. But we have children in in the midst of a business negotiation. Mm -hmm. That's what makes things difficult because emotions start to fly high. Uh, I, I just implore both sides to work. Uh, in the best interest of uh, the kids and the best mm -hmm. interest of Ontario. Sure. I, I think the fact that they have decided that this is going to be a one-day strike mm -hmm. is probably one of the reasons why it will probably happen. Absolutely. Because if it were <laughs> an indefinite, um, then I think with, you know, backs up against the wall and recognizing that the children are the ones who are ultimately going to suffer, mm -hmm. then chances are a deal would have been made at the last minute. But I think the uh, ability of the work uh, of the teachers to um, be able to withhold their um, their their labor um, is an important um, tool in the bargaining process, mm -hmm. and so we wouldn't want to deny them that. Albeit, we can only appeal to both sides of this discussion to ensure that the mm -hmm. interests of our children uh, come first, and, 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 and we keep them in the classroom because that's ultimately should be the goal. And and I just wanted to th that's where it gets difficult because. Um, there is the argument of the teachers being an essential service of sorts. And this is where it gets difficult because there is the rights of people, individuals, teachers. I mean, I don't think there's anyone in this room nor any room mm -hmm. that doesn't have a family member, a close friend that's a teacher. So it's not like there, it's a, I, this, this, this uh, sense of one side or the other, I think starts to be the root of the problem. Yeah. Uh, it's a matter of how do we reach a point that both sides are understood, are listened to, and the the needs and rights of both sides are met. Yeah, I, th I think I think there's a wider discussion as well. Like we just came off the CN strike recently, um, you know, and that's almost caused great damage across the country. You know, so we're kind of wondering, you know, um, you know, is it time that the you know I, I respect as as Len said earlier the right of the labor movement to to with, withhold uh, their service. But isn't there a bigger picture as well, you know, in a globalized economy, in a globalized world, you know, are, you know there's increased pressure, for, I would think, to say, you know, let us, let us keep services going while we continue those hard negotiations. Yes, and of, of course there are those pressures, which is precisely why it is so important that mm -hmm. they come to agreement. But you cannot deny mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the, the capacity to re re withhold your labor mm -hmm. um, as probably the main chip that they have mm -hmm. um, as part of the bargaining process. Um, and I, I certainly wouldn't want us to go down the road of denying um, teachers the right to be able to strike. All right, we, 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 we come back to that. We hope that the kids will be in the classroom tomorrow. We have one more we want to jump yeah. on. There's a, a hot topic in Brampton, and we're going to talk about the big spenders in the City Hall very shortly. There's a hot topic in Brampton, uh, Christian Heritage Month um, being declared uh, for December. There are some councillors who think that it was not necessary. There are some uh, residents who think it is necessary you know throughout the year uh, we don't even have time to look at it now we have had many um, proclamations and heritage months and stuff like that um, you know there are some online comments I've seen that we're now going down a slippery slope because now everybody wants a heritage month your, your view on this I actually I actually uh, concur that that when we start to um, have you know blur the lines between the state and religious celebrations and 
acknowledging religious groups and all of that, um, it is something we should be careful of. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one counselor, even though he voted for the motion, um, acknowledged it and, and, and you know, kind of brought it out. That this is an issue that we should think carefully about. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have to be careful that we're using these uh, proclamations to celebrate the diversity mm -hmm. rather than using them as tools of div uh, divisiveness. Yes. Um, and yes. I think, unfortunately, some of these celebrations are coming across this of way. being divisive. Yes. Ten seconds to you, Mario. We are about uh, one I, I agree. <laughs> it, it, well, listen, if you're going to give uh, kudos or, or recognition to uh, different religions, be consistent. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be uh, someone that believes in uh, state and religion being separate, mm -hmm. be consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's really the message is that I, I, I concur as well. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that there's, there is difficulty, mm -hmm. but you need to be consistent in that. You can't pick and choose when mm -hmm. you actually raise that point. And that's mm -hmm. where I think a lot of exception or a lot of problems have, right. has got, come out. Got to leave it there. When I go to the break, when we come back, how are the tax dollars being spent by our city council? This is On Point. Stay with us. Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity in our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties Team, powered by Remax West. So welcome back to On Point, your current affairs and political talk show program right here in the city of Brampton. Now we're going to take a look, um, Mario Len, with our viewers into the big spenders <laughs> and how our tax dollars are being spent here in the city of Brampton. So um, just to remind you, you know, we have uh, 10 city councillors or 10 councillors, uh, city and regional councillors, and we also have one uh, mayor. And uh, they, we had some changes recently in the formula as to you know, how they, they spend their monies. And um, now we're going to take a big look into that to see how your tax dollars are being spent by these uh, members of council. <laughs> but let's go back. Let's take a look back. There's an article, uh, Mario, I want to lead us off there. Uh, you know, Councillors had a time when they, you know, their, their staff were actually uh, employed to the corporation. Uh, this council said they wanted to change how their budget is allocated, change how their staff is managed. And they actually went ahead and doubled their staff costs, doubled their office expenditure by over a million dollars. Uh, Mario, your, your, feedback as we, your feedback on that. This was an issue that in January when these numbers came out, uh, I, I was truly outraged. I was mm -hmm. truly outraged at, at the um, at the fact that these n we always preach transparency, respect for taxpayers' dollars, yep. and in one motion, essentially, mm -hmm. the budget increased by over a million dollars. I stress over a million dollars. Now, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that money is all being spent. Yeah. Uh, so that's what a but budget the ability is. to spend the a million dollars came spend on, that on this dollar. council. And okay. let me just give you a historical million perspective. Dollars. Is in 2014, yep. there was one assistant for every two counselors yep. within the ward. Yep. In 2015, as the city, I guess, grew, they chose mm -hmm. to have one assistant for each counselor. Mm -hmm. So we can break down the dollars and cents if you that. But uh, essentially... Whatever that, that the allocation of dollars to that assistant was mm -hmm. then divided from, from half, if you will, to one each. To one each yeah. This council chose to have a budget of $200,000 plus mm -hmm. for each individual council, uh, counselor. Well, 338000 what I'm seeing here. Correct. And that, but that includes their own salary. Yeah. Yeah. 
So their own salary. So everything that that counselor is responsible for, including their salary, so they use that auspice of transparency. So we see the $338,000. Yeah. This is the form that you actually get when you actually go onto the website. Very, very, very line item. The line items, though, are not clear. I do not see what is being spent for individual staff. Mm -hmm. Is there one staff member? Are there two staff members? Now, one may argue, I don't care how many counselors or how many staff well, they have. Well, the numbers are the numbers. Mm -hmm. So to be clear again, is it was this council that chose to, 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 to have this. Dollars. And that was a eight to three vote. Mm -hmm. An eight to three vote uh, and whomever put the motion forward, whoever seconded the motion, it was a um, majority decision to go for, forward with this budget. Uh, and then it, we can continue in discussing the numbers. Len, Len, you know, your feedback on that move to, to double the budget to you know, have politically appointed staff rather than city staff uh, with each councillor and through a million dollars uh, increase in the budget. There's a, there's a lot you're saying in that. <laughs> very much very so. loaded. Um, and so I'll speak, I'll speak specifically to the uh, increase in, in the budget. Um, it seemed over the top. And it's clear also in the spending pattern of each councillor. Because when you look at it, most of the councillors, I would say not all, are coming in around 200000 in mm -hmm. spite of the fact that the budget is $338,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the spending has not increased to keep pace. So with the. I don't want to cut you off. There yeah. are three more months included or to be accounted for. Sure. sure. So mm -hmm. just wanted to include that. Sure, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, if, you, if you look at... If you look at what the uh, the amount is percentage wise of the total budget, mm -hmm. um, it, it 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 certainly and within um, what the budgeted amount should look like, and there's not a lot of overspending. When I look at some of the details on what people are spending on, I see mm -hmm. nothing to me that seems alarming. Mm -hmm. um, office expenses, it looks looks like, um, but again, some of the numbers there, for example, that comes under office expense, a very large number, you mm -hmm. can't tell what that is being spent on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's where, to kind of allude to something Mario said around the issue of transparency, because if mm -hmm. the idea is that you need, want to become more transparent, yeah. understanding what that large number is of yeah. 90 odd thousand dollars, yeah. that just comes under the big category of office expense. Yeah. Um, or salaries. Or um, salaries. So one thing yeah. that we need to yeah. look at is, you know, if they could break that down for us, comments, let us know, you know, who has um, one, uh, one staff, who has more than one staff. You know, how this stuff costs that you're spending. Yeah. Give well, us a bit more details on that for and, sure. And, and I don't want to take away from, uh, from that, Len, but I wanted to, and I think you were getting there, mm -hmm. was one key aspect that you asked, Jermaine, is the fact that previously mm -hmm. the office assistance administration was a, um, an entity, a, a, um, an employee the of the, the corporation. corporation. Yeah. 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 Therefore, yeah. they answered to the corporation. Yeah. Currently, they are a, an employee of the counselor. Yeah. Therefore, they answer to the counselor. The counselor. The so the, counselor. The, the, the political staff model, mm -hmm. I think, is an actual good concept. Mm -hmm. It's the amount and the excessive amount that mm -hmm. was done essentially overnight. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. I can argue a city of this uh, size should have political mm -hmm. staff. Yeah. But yeah. do you need political staff? at $100,000, mm -hmm. what is that number? Political yeah. staff essentially is when you're going out to events, when you're actually, someone doing research, someone's doing, this. we don't know mm -hmm. how many staff members are doing that job. And, and, and I'm going to be right and clear, is that that leads and is very open to mm -hmm. campaigning potential, mm -hmm. is, is that I don't know if the mm -hmm. person is doing the work mm -hmm. of the corporation, or are they doing the work of the counselor? Now, it should be, essentially, mm -hmm. we, we trust in our counselor, right <laughs> is that that counselor is, 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 is the person directing that staff member. Yes. So it should be for the, uh, the betterment of the corporation. Yes. But mm -hmm. we don't see the checks and balances potential. That's, I don't see that. So yes. let's jump into a few things before we even get in there, Len. Let's jump mm -hmm. into, uh, let's, let's go to the slide. Let's look at who are the big spenders first, and then we can uh, work our way back into a few things. So let's go to that slide. We're keeping it for, for the last, but let's see who are the biggest spenders at City Hall. 
Um, so right now, the biggest spender that we have at Brampton City Hall right now, up until the available information is on September 30th. So the biggest spender we have at Brampton City Hall now is co Regional Councillor Pat Fratini, yeah. um, spending $202,251 up until September. I want to dig a little bit more into his figures very shortly. And he's the one right now who is crying out about expenditures at City Hall. Let's put that, up, let's put that back up a little, a little bit so we can see some more. Just behind him is Councillor Peleshi at two hundred and one thousand. Um, Councillor Williams uh, at um, one hundred and ninety nine thousand. Councillor Gupreet Dillon uh, one hundred and ninety eight. Uh, you know, for the, for the case of those who might not be able to read it, some you know, uh, see it. Some want to read it for you. Councillor Madores at one hundred and ninety one thousand. Uh, Councillor Santos at one hundred and eighty one thousand. Followed by uh, Councillor Vicente also at one hundred and eighty one thousand. Those two are a team, eh? So they are, we are, you see, they are, they are doing everything almost alike there. Uh, we have Councillor Councillor Singh at 180,000, Councillor Bowman 166,000, and the least spender, um, Councillor Williams at 130,000, and uh, the mayor is reporting 161,000. So I want to get a bit deeper into some of those figures. Um, Len, you're off the figures, man, among us. Um, anything jump out at you from from those figures? Um, a couple of things. So, so I, I back to the kind of the question of, you know, lack of transparency in some of those the numbers, because yeah. you can't really determine what it is being spent right. on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a couple of things um, it, it is one, the person who is screaming the loudest about expenditure is the one spending the most. Yeah. Um, whether that is out of uh, the amount he's spending is uh, uh, over the, the, the what is acceptable. Um, no, it, it may be that all of the expenses that are there are allowable expenses. And so mm -hmm. that's not my question. The question becomes, why are you screaming at another councillor who is actually spending less and pointing out, um, for me, it's, it's one thing you know, to, to have a debate at City Hall over expense. It's another thing to have a campaign against a fellow councillor mm -hmm. on Facebook and on social media. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that's what this expense conversation has turned into a, a campaign against a fellow council. And one of the things that was very distasteful oh, about the previous sorry, we're, we're out of time, can, can you hold up that last yes. for us? Okay. We're out of time. <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, what exactly is in those figures? What exactly are those monies being spent on? We will break it down. Stay with us. This is On Point. Awesome. My name is Trish Curling, and I am an online coach, personal trainer, and yoga teacher and your new host of Shaping Life, which is all about understanding that we have the ability and the control to take charge of our health and wellness. But we can't do it alone, and I can't wait to sit down with the best in the industry. Please tune in every Friday at 1 p.m. live here on the TCM Network. So welcome back uh, to On Point. We just discovered that Councillor Pat Fortini is the biggest spender at Brampton City Hall uh, right now. And um, Len, you were, you were in the middle of a thought and we had to go to the break there. Do um, so you want to finish a point and then we can uh, break down some of the numbers? Yes. Uh, the point I was making was one around, um, you know, the campaign. Yeah. Um, it's good to have debate at City Hall over the expenses. And these uh, uh, debates are public. We can all participate in them at, at, mm -hmm. at, uh, in the public's domain. Uh, the, the challenge, though, I find is when we take these out of City Hall and we go into a social media campaign. And I think part of the nature of previous councils was the divisiveness that was seen. And mm -hmm. I think we're going down that path again, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. I would encourage the councillors to keep their debates to City Hall and, and, and have good dialogue, if necessary, on social Absolutely. media, mm -hmm. rather than just uh, getting into this 
you know, fighting. He said, she said. He said, she said. One yes. thing that I, I, I want to focus on, one thing that people should really understand is that these were rules or points of, 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 of let's call it, uh, that were discussed at nauseum. Mm -hmm. And it was this council that chose to go that route. So if you have an issue with a certain mechanism, mm -hmm. then to Len's point, bring it up and change the mechanism. Yeah. So essentially that's what has occurred, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that there was an issue with um, a, um, an aspect of having a consultant as opposed to a staffer. Mm -hmm. And it has come, I guess, through social media. We did, uh, it was brought to our attention that one of the reasons that perhaps it's not clear on what the breakup is in salaries are um, privacy rights to the actual staff members, which mm -hmm. is understandable. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. don't even get a clear understanding of how many staff members there are. So we're not, we don't need the details of how much person this person is making, but I would mm -hmm. like to know, yeah. are, is there one person employed or are there eight people employed? The, the, mm -hmm. we, and we'll probably get into the actual, mm -hmm. um, the consultant aspect, mm -hmm. but as someone who is a business owner, someone that understands business, there are some big uplifts mm -hmm. on having a consultant uh, As opposed to a staff member. To a staff member. Mm -hmm. uh, a decrease of WSIB charges, uh, the ability to terminate uh, as you need uh, and to hire as you need. Yeah. So if that's something, and, and, and our mayor has used that because it's the right thing to do at certain mm -hmm. points that's in time. Place, yeah. And this council has now asked staff to go back mm -hmm. and go and study the Toronto model of using consultants mm -hmm. and then come back with a recommendation. So they may come back and say, this is a great model to have. They mm -hmm. may come back and say there's issues. But mm -hmm. this got brought up and, and basically blasted in, in let's call it mm -hmm. the public. Yeah. And they should have just gone with that recommendation to staff and said, look at this and come back. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and that's, again, the trend <laughs> that I see happening. You have a disagreement uh, in, in, in chamber with, mm -hmm. a, with another member on an issue. It's debated. You may make a decision together and then you continue the... The discussion. campaign yeah. mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. to try and discredit another member. Yeah. So, and so, I think so, that's destructive. So, so, so I guess what Mario is, is pointing at here, um, so since the councillors are responsible for their budgets, they have the option to hire who they want to hire, yeah. right? But when you hire someone on, you know, what listeners out there should understand is that there are costs associated with that. You know, you have to do uh, their taxes, you have to do their, their, their pensions, their WSIB, all these things. But when you take on a consultant, you don't have those kind of, of, of costs to, to, to encounter and to deal with. So we have a situation here in Ward 7 and Ward 7 and 8 where um, Councillor Williams uh, is, is, was, was called out and is being called out by his fellow, her fellow colleague, Councillor Pat Fortini, for paying $21,000 over a period, I think it was between April and November, mm -hmm. um, to pay $21,000. I, I find it rather in, 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 interesting because Councillor uh, uh, Fortini hired, according to him, four students during the summer months, according to him, to do outreach. And what he has said, and just quoting from him, that he paid them $20,000 to do outreach during the summer. Now let's back up a little to, to, to give some context <laughs> to this issue. This is the council that says they want to get rid of campaign signs. That you can't put campaign signs up and they want to get rid of campaign signs. But here is a counselor who is using $20,000 in a month in the summer to hire four people to go around and to, hand, to, to do outreach, which includes, and let's, let's go to that, that, that slide there that shows um, newsletters. Let's go to that newsletter sign. This said counselor um, spent $9,539 to purchase newsletters and have plus another 20000 for people to go about in the summer to hand them out or to do, um, to do uh, outreach, outreach, as he put it. That, to be clear, those numbers are mm -hmm. actual not inclusive of the city numbers. Oh. Those are regional budget. Yes. Yes. So regional councillors have an additional budget yeah. of $23,260, yeah, yep. and they have the ability of using X. But on top of that budget, mm -hmm. they have access and the ability to send out a newsletter, whether it be quarterly, um, ha you know, semi-annually or annually. Mm -hmm. And so there are numbers where councillors have spent anywhere between three to five thousand uh, dollars. Mm and -hmm. some councillors have spent uh, approaching ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And many will argue that that is promotion and 
campaigning. <laughs> now, uh, to your point, when you're talking about uh, the 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 numbers, <laughs> is you know these are things that we can have a open dialogue and discuss it, and that's mm -hmm. where I think the, the this panel yep. is yep. is yep. saying yep. that you know these issues can be dealt with in a professional yep. and an actual adult like. Uh, temperament yep. and we yep. are not seeing that I am not seeing that mm -hmm. from this council currently mm -hmm. yep. so absolutely Lynn? actually there's there's another outlier that I want to point out mm -hmm. and and um, it's uh, mr. Wellen um, least of the spenders mm -hmm. 129,000 mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that's an interesting outlier because people may say well you know he's not spending any money mm -hmm. well I off I, I also wonder what is he doing? <laughs> if you're not spending anything that's within your budget to be able to serve the, the community, mm -hmm. I, I wonder if the if the um, folks over in Ward Two and Six mm -hmm. feel like they are being served. That, that um, and, and this is a question that <laughs> yeah, the, the constituents should ask. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'd much rather my councillor spend less than more, yeah. but. You want it's, the service. Va it's value for dollars. <coughs> yeah. It's value for dollars. Mm -hmm. Is is if my councillor goes to a uh, AMO conference and there's something that is brought back to me as a constituent of value. Mm -hmm. It's no different than me investing in an, a supervisor or a manager, yep. is that these are the directors of a corporation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Our counselors are the directors of a $1 billion plus corporation. That's exclusive of the region that is a $4 billion corporation. So they need to be educated. But what are they doing with their dollars? I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I know these guys run away from it, but I want to come back for a minute here towards seven and eight with these okay, two yes. councillors um, <laughs> who are clashing there with yeah. each other, right? Because I, 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 am, I, I want our viewers and, and those who are out there to, to, to really zero in on this. You know, we have one councillor using a consultant from April to, to November, $21,000. One councillor in the same, just for summer, using $20,000 to do outreach. And I'm kind of wondering, you know, outreach, campaigning, Handing out newsletters, knocking on doors. Are we at a slippery soap with Absolutely. when a councillor is using taxpayers' dollars to send students out there in the summer to hand out uh, newsletters to knock on doors? Say, hey, I'm here on behalf of councillor X Y Z. Um, I want to give you a flyer. How do you, as someone now who in four years you want to run for city councillor? This councillor, people in that area, in that ward, would have seen individuals from this councillor every summer for four years. <laughs> coming and knocking on their doors. How do you replace a councillor like that when he's doing taxpayers' dollars to get his name out there for four years? So I'm going to start with this. <laughs> the, the article states uh, that the councillors, or there's an innuendo that the councillor of 7-8, Jermaine mm -hmm. Williams, used a loophole mm -hmm. to have a consultant hired. Mm -hmm. This is not a loophole. It is a rule. Yes or no? Is it allowed? Yes. It was allowed. Now... That uh, council has chosen to disallow, mm -hmm. but it was allowed. Yeah. And to your point is that they were able to itemize this, and this is where I question. You're able to itemize a uh, consulting fee, yeah, uh, and actually name who the individual is, yeah. I so you use that aspect when you're talking about privacy issue, mm -hmm. but there's three or four potential employees, yeah, who you don't know who they you are. don't know who they uh, are. You don't know dollars. what their responsibilities were. Yeah. And this is where it gets very, very troublesome, mm -hmm. is that if you're going to be consistent, be consistent, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, Carby, for the consultant fee, there was a detailed list as to yes. what needs to be there. Yes. This $20,000, uh, Councillor uh, Partini proposed yeah. to pay to students. We don't know exactly what they did, apart from handing out newsletters or doing outreach, according to him. I, 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 I hear that concern, and, and those are questions to be asked of the, the councillor, yeah. um, especially because he's so keen on... You know, bring it up. Bring we it are up. going to take a quick break. We invite Councillor Fatini to join us. We want to hear from you as the biggest spender in Brampton City Council. When we come back, we dig a little bit more into the numbers. At Benjamin Law, we understand the real cost of personal injuries. As the victim of an accident, you may be the one who's physically hurt, but your main concern is that your family are the ones who will pay the price. 
Benjamin Law will be there for you, helping, supporting, and working tirelessly to resolve your personal injury case. Call 1-855-899-4878 or visit BenjaminLaw.ca and let our family of lawyers help your family. Welcome back to On Point. We are looking at how your tax dollars are being spent by the councillors here at the Brampton City Hall. And uh, when we, before the break, if we put that figure back up, we realized that Councillor Fortini is the biggest spender um, in our city and uh, Councillor Williams is the smallest spender. We want to have a talk with Councillor Williams as well to hear, you know, um, you know, how is he serving the residents of Wards 2 and 6 and I'm out of a disclaimer, I ran in Wards 2 and 6, so we want to know, you know, how is he <laughs> serving them over there and keeping the budget at that low, um, that low right there. Um, I think we're in our last segment here. I want to look at a few more other little things. You know, something that jumped out at me. <coughs> um, Len Carby, if you want to jump on this one here. A few other, other little expenditures that we see, you know, and I call them uh, some, some abnormal, not abnormal, just outlayer expenditure. Um, Councillor Gupreet Dillon um, jumped out at me when I looked at some of his numbers. And again, you know, it's up to the residents to see if this is how they want their tax dollars being spent, right? Mm -hmm. Um, he spent $1,773 to purchase uh, a Canon camera, uh, you know, uh, a, a video system so he can record his messages and send them out. Um, you know, uh, we, we are living in a, in, a, in a different age and everybody wants to be on camera. I mean, a good expenditure? This is how we want to spend some of our money there, Len? You know, that for me is, is kind of getting into the weeds um, <laughs> because another person may spend that on an iPad. And, mm -hmm. do, and does the same thing and we would not have seen that as a, abnormal mm -hmm, right so mm -hmm. um i tend not to get down into the weeds like that was it okay. uh, is it an expense that um is allowed mm -hmm. and if it is then absolutely why it, why it, why should it be a concern mm -hmm. as and and be the fact that it's declared and it's transparent it's there because we're seeing it uh -huh. um I, I i don't have a specific you know criticism okay. of that per se and, and I've seen it being used. I mean, uh, Gapreet Dillon does a, a, a weekly or, or monthly uh, update, uh, update mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. lets his constituent know what's going on. Some may argue that's a waste of time slash mm -hmm. campaigning as well, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yeah. So if it falls within the rules mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's an allowable expense, mm -hmm. then let's not micromanage and, and to Len's mm -hmm. point, going to the weeds for every single We're component. not going to the weeds, but let's go to another one. A, a barbecue. We saw some councillors expense in barbecue costs. Yes. Yeah. You know, they're hosting barbecues and they're expensing the barbecue costs to the taxpayers. Um, you know, is that campaigning? Is that something that we really want to see our taxpayers being used for? Because, again, you know, somebody who might want to run for office might not hold an annual barbecue, but you have access to the taxpayers' dollars and you are holding an annual barbecue. Is that something we want our monies to be doing? Well, unless they decide to come up with guidelines around what is uh, allowed and what is not allowed. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, those things are allowed. That's right. We, we uh, know they are allowed, but yeah. the question is, though, is it... Is it is that, is that as taxpayers in Brampton, yeah, that's where we want our monies to be spent? Well, we definitely have the, de the ability to debate that and yeah. say mm -hmm. this, is that does it engage the community? Do yep. people in the mm -hmm. community enjoy coming to these events and feel like they're part of, you know, I, I live uh, in, in the Snell Grove area. So when mm -hmm. there's something Snell Grove based, we like mm -hmm. to come out. People that are part of, um, you know, Peel Village. It, yep. it, it's they, there. It's a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Whatever those communities are, there are aspects and and, and abilities to uh, say that that there it is justifiable. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are aspects to 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 mm -hmm. uh, deny it as well. But you know, again, to the amount of dollars, I'm gonna just I'm, I'm gonna backtrack <laughs> one thing. I wanted to put this out because um, mm -hmm. I I, I want to focus again on this one million dollar uplift of budget. Okay. Okay. And I just want to quote something from that article back in the day. And uh, I, I give kudos to the three councillors that did not support it. Who are those councillors? Uh, Mike, Mike Pelleschi, um, Doug Wellens, and uh, Jeff, Jeff Bowman, Bowman, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Don't okay. quote me on that. But Mike is, is quoted in the Brampton Guardian. Okay. So it was a motion appear, uh, approved by council included stipulations that staffing changes could not be paid through a tax increase or cuts in services. However, when asked by wards two and six regional councilor Michael Palashi, where city staff hoped to uh, have those savings and will and how would they be paying for this potential million dollars? Mm -hmm. uh, CAO at the time, Joe Patari said staff hadn't figured out uh, that part yet. 
So <laughs> this is something that was overlooked and, and, and we're, we're chuckling about it, <laughs> but they voted on something that has the implications of being a, a million dollars expenditure yeah. and they don't know where that money is coming from. That mm -hmm. for me means that this is, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's too new and, mm -hmm. and, and hasn't been thought through pro properly to be mm -hmm. put on as a line item and voted on. That's mm -hmm. where I go with this is that yeah. there's, you know, it, so I do commend counselors have not spent the money that they are allowed to spend. Mm -hmm. So I want to stress that. And Len said, said mm -hmm. it best. I mean, the, the, all counselors come within a certain tolerance here. It's mm -hmm. the nitty-gritty well, remember though that that what what we have here are figures up to september absolutely right um this, there's, there's three, three more months, months three more months to go and if one counts at two hundred and two thousand, uh you know the three months you know factor in their salaries their staff costs and uh there's parties and stuff yes, you know, right. it, it could get up there yep yes mm -hmm. yes um the, the, again you know i i i want us i want us to be 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 res reasonable also Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, as I think Mario, you alluded to this. Mm -hmm. These you're managing a, a billion-dollar corporation, mm -hmm. um, and if we're going to question someone's purchase of a cell phone to be able to do their job, and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you know you're, you're getting now really into the weeds. Um, you're going to question the expenditure for a Tim Hortons for a group meeting. Mm -hmm. you, you can always question it. Absolutely. It's the right of every citizen to question. Mm -hmm. And so, if someone asks a question, I have no problem with them asking the question. The, 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 the issue, though, is um, maybe what we should be looking at is if we have concerns about the areas in which then the, the, the counselors are spending, then maybe there needs to be some guidelines around mm -hmm. what are considered allowable expenditures. Mm -hmm. But if there are allowable expenditures that are all there, then um, I think we have to work with uh, the counselors and, 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 and as long as we're getting value mm -hmm. for, for money, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. These guys have uh, to be able to do their, their jobs also. And we can get that. I mean, you know, as, as you rightly say, you know, we need to decide, you know, we see some counselors, you know, billing the taxpayers for their home internet. Um, mm -hmm. Other counselors don't, you know, but we need to look at, you know, you know, as you rightly say, what are allowable and, and what mm -hmm. looks right and proper. Um, you know, not many workers out there can go to their offices and say, hey, listen, I'm going to build you because I have to check my internet at home or use my internet at home. You know, so these are some of the questions we want to ask of our city councillor. Um, to the councillors, we we were not able to we, we take a brief look at the mayor's budget. The mayor's budget is within uh, reason again. Um, some of the items you know we are not able to look at because of how the report is is structured or how the report um, is set. We, we can't get some of the detailed line items, right? So I mean you know in terms of enhancing transparency, uh, what would you ask them then for this report? You know how more can we break down to see what are some of the things that are there really? I think the, the, the large uh, number that just says office expense, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think a big portion of that may be salaries for individuals, maybe a little bit more transparency regarding what, is, what are allowed mm -hmm. office expenses, and if there are, if there are staff you know, included in that, how many staff? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I do take the point around transparency for salaries for individuals, mm -hmm. um, but it's funny how the complaint was around the consultant but we had more transparency on that issue than we have with, with staff, <laughs> the other staff being employed. Um, but, I, but I think it's a question, again, it's, I'm always looking for, for value. Mm -hmm. And so is this one person that is being employed and you're paying you know, a, a, a salary of equal to what the, 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 the counselor is getting? Or is this you know, three or four individuals? And what are their functions? So that if we're doing an analysis of the value for money, we can understand what that number means. Well, listen, the, the city and, and, and all corporations do a thorough budget analysis. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the budget analysis goes through items and says, this is going to be our budget. Mm -hmm. And this is why, why I raise that concern, is that the staffing model and the budget that the council has, mm -hmm. um, as, as, as well as, when, and I was following it while this was occurring, is mm -hmm. city... Um, corporation did a good job of, of highlighting if it's a, a part-timer or a full-timer, mm -hmm. but you had to follow those meetings mm -hmm. to understand even the concept. And at the end of the day, and I think we're going full circle, if that is the budget that you come up with, mm -hmm. then don't actual com actually complain when the numbers fall within that mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. Is that if this budget <laughs> was exceeded, please highlight it, mm -hmm. ring alarm bells, mm -hmm. but it's within the budget. 
And as a, again, as someone that has run businesses and understands the values, you know, I don't uh, do a project and, and, and actually become an engineer. I hire an engineer that is a consultant and he does the job. Once mm -hmm. they are done, you they are them. gone. Yeah. This is something that there is. So if there are guidelines mm -hmm. to how consultants are used, then bring them forward and implement them, yeah. right? This is where the, 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 the real constructive uh, dialogues occur as opposed to Len's point of going to the social media and the media and saying, well, there is someone that's coming into our office and he's drinking our coffee. <laughs> so, you know, to be clear, this is not your coffee. It is our the collective coffee. coffee yep. So if someone wants to drink the coffee and they put in a buck, let them spend the, it, it, the This is how trivial we can come when we talk about mm -hmm. getting into the weeds. Yeah. It's about value for dollar mm -hmm. and we expect that value for dollar. But I don't see as a, as a resident where that value for dollar truly is. I don't know who my political staff members are. I don't know how many there are. Yeah. And I don't know what the real guideline is. Is it four? Is it seven? Mm -hmm. I, I know it's $200,000, but I don't know what the breakup potentially. It can it be how much, yeah. one at $7,000 multiple mm -hmm. times. I don't know. Yeah. Right? Lots, lots, lots to talk about there. Uh, we also see, so we're about to the break here. We'll come to the end of the program. Uh, but I'm also seeing lots of, of expenditure being spent on souvenirs um, to be donated by the councillors. Again, you know, as you say, it's allowable expenses, but it's up to whether or not, you know, we want uh, to be spending some of our monies um, on souvenirs. Obviously, we have two there, but we have a lot more councillors, um, you know, who are spending monies. Uh, on their souvenirs and to get their names out there again you know you wonder it whether it's campaigning whether it's keeping your name before the public you know whether it's something or whatever but uh, a lot here when we come back next week you know we we have two things that has just passed the 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 transit have voted a collective agreement we don't know the details of that as yet we want to look into that as well that's another area of expenditure um the fire department have also recently wrapped up their negotiations with the city those are also expenditures that hopefully next week we can come we can have a conversation about that again um len your final word your final word as it relates to how the taxpayers dollars are being spent within our city I, after looking at the, the, the budgets and the expenses, I, I really didn't see anything that's hugely alarming. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, this exercise in kind of taking a look at it is maybe a heads up to counselors that we are paying attention. Yes. yes. And so although they are within budget, um, they should finish that way also. Yes. Um, we have three <laughs> more months to go and, and we'll be paying close attention because I think at the end of the year, um, we should be doing this exercise again yes. and reminding them that, you know, whatever the budget is set, they should stay within that and be responsible and demonstrate uh, value for money. And I think that's where um, sometimes it's a little bit, uh, you know, n it lacks some Not transparency. Up. So we can't, that we can't see the value for money at this point. Mario, we give you the final word. Uh, once we put up back that slide showing the big spenders and the little spenders, uh, Mario, your final word as well as how our tax dollars are being spent at the City Hall. Well, I echo uh, what Len just said in the sense of I, I don't <coughs> see anything that is alarming in the sense that uh, alarm bells are being raised and, and, and it's, it's uh, a huge concern. But, uh, you know, one of the counselors stated that, um, you know, this is you know this mechanism let's call it this is something that they'll have to be accountable to when the uh people go back to the polls and and, yes. and, and so the reality is to lens point we're looking at it and we should look at it yep. and we implore more people to look, to look at, at it, it. Yep. because yep. this dialogue is what's constructive the constructive dialogue of looking at the numbers and saying you know what mm -hmm. i disagree with this please implement some rules on that yes. is where we can go not yes. bashing people because they spent certain dollars on this and dollars on that is that mm -hmm. it falls within the rules so change the rules if we don't like the rules all right you can always depend on on point to give you the detailed information that's how your tax dollars are being spent by our city councillors. when we come back next week we'll take a look on two agreements that have just been uh signed uh more expenditure of your tax dollars thanks for watching this is on point <laughs>